Hello everyone and welcome back to Eli vs. Darkest Dungeon. Now, last episode we went through the tutorial, and this episode we're just going to do our first little foray into the ruins. So, when you begin a... little, uh... quest, you go through this page here and decide which quest you want to do. Normally there's a lot more, and as you play more you unlock more. Uh, we could try the, the Darkest Dungeon, which you need to be level 6. And that'd be dumb. Um, but each one will give you a little icon re uh, representing what you're going to be doing in that quest. So for this one, we're going to be exploring 90% of the rooms. Um, sometimes you'll be fighting everything in it. Sometimes you'll be, like, uh, there's one quest where you start off with three medicines and you have to go cleanse um, blighted corpses that have been crucified that are all along in different rooms. Um, sometimes you're going to collect supplies to s keep your hamlet alive, uh, things like that. So this time, all we're doing is we're going to go on a very short little expedition to take a look what's going on in the ruins. Hmm, pardon me. Um, we all get 3,000 gold, four crests, and a stun stone. Not to be confused with the sunstone, there is no Pokemon evolutions in this one. Um, so, we're going to provision ourselves. The cost of preparedness, measured now in gold, later in blood. Now, this is sort of where you are going to make and break your expedition. You have to decide what you're going to spend money on, and this stuff costs a pretty penny. So, you need food to stave off hunger. Um, every now and again, it's completely random. Your party will say, hey... Uh, they're very hungry, eat food. If you don't eat food, they take damage and they get stressed out. Um, if you are on a long expedition, you'll be able to camp. And when you camp, you need to eat. If you uh, have a little bit of food, they'll recover a little bit of health. If you have a little more food, they'll recover more health and they won't suffer stress damage. If they feast and you have a lot of food, they'll recover a lot of health, they'll get a, lot of, they'll get a decent amount of stress recovered, and... This can really save you if you are having, if you are struggling in your uh, little missions. So, normally I get eight. That will cover if uh, they want to eat twice in a mission, which is unusual but has happened. Uh, we'll cover basic healing if I absolutely need it to. As well, uh, I want to grab some band aids to stop bleeding. I want to grab some anti venoms. Um, I don't usually use medicinal herbs. It's useful in certain areas, like uh, the cove, where there's a lot of times you'll run into like dead fish corpses, and you can use the medicinal herbs to cleanse the gut and get items from it. And if you don't, you usually either get sick or it's trapped. Um, but uh, and you can also use it to eliminate debuffs. But I don't usually end up doing it because it's expensive. And I grab at least two skeleton keys because. You will find chests with your family's crest on it. If you have the key, you get more stuff. Um, and then torches. Torches are your lifeblood. If you want to increase the difficulty of the game, which don't really need to, uh, you can carry less torches. You'll get more loot, but there's also the chance that your party is going to get surprised, and they're going to get stressed out more often, and it can be really bad. Your first expedition to the ruins of your ancestry. Be curious. Be careful. Alright. So, we're just gonna go up. Um, we can probably go up and around and ignore that one room, since we only have to explore 90%. But we will see. So, each area is... Each area is segmented into four separate little slots, which can contain anything from curiosities, traps, um... Like, here we go. If I back up a frame... Whoopsies! You'll see that this is uh, a curiosity. Also, walking backwards causes stress. Sometimes curiosities will give you things like torches, or they could give you things like food, or traps, or... Oh, here we go. We're fighting undead today. Uh, great shot. Now, zombies don't bleed very well. As you can see, they have a 200% resistance to bleed. Press the 
disadvantage. Give them no quarter. Uh, he's got one speed, but he's still faster than my guy. Um, so you've got all your different stats. Um, your accuracy, your critical chance, how much damage you do, your dodge chance, uh, your protection points, which is basically like a percent damage reduction, Confidence and your speed. The enemy crumbles. Cool. Oh, I didn't grab a shovel. That's what I forgot. Um, there... Heh. <laughs> So, I got very lucky just now in picking up a shovel, because in the next room, as you can see, there's an obstacle and a battle. So this obstacle is easily cleared away with a shovel. Even the cold stone seems bent on preventing passage. But if I didn't have that shovel, I would be clearing it by hand, leading to damage and lots of stress gained. So at early levels, there is really no point to not always have your light up a lot, at least as far as I think, because your heroes are weak and they will die. They will die very quickly. As the fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. Yes, you don't get as much loot. But it is a lot easier for mo to deal with a party of monsters that have been surprised than it is to deal with a party of monsters that have surprised you. Now, the surprise mechanic is... Uh, interesting. I really like it. So when you surprise monsters, you get an entire round where you get to go first. Doesn't matter what their speed is. If you get surprised, Destroy your party's all. position swaps randomly and then it continues as normal with speed. So each character will have different abilities that can only be used in specific slots of the party. For example, if this guy is uh, up at the front in the very first position here, well, um, he can't use his pistol shot. Um, if he's in the back, he can't use his open vein. If he's in uh, the front or the back, can't use his grape shot blast. Stuff like that. So you have to consider what your characters, or what your adventurers do and what you want them to do. That probably came out really, really crappy. I'm sorry. That contains loot. So things like uh, busts and deeds and paintings and crests are all used to upgrade buildings and the NPCs. So you want to collect as many of them as possible. Also, status effects are huge in this game. You really want to use them. And if you see, you run across an enemy that has a lot of, uh, or has a very high uh, protection stat, debuff the crap out of them. Make them bleed, poison them, stun them, um whatever you can. And as for using items on your turn, you can only use an item for each hero. You cannot, I can't use the bandage on him because it's not his turn. I could heal him, but that would be a waste of damage. Uh, let's stun him for now. So when it gets back to his turn, I'm going to apply the bandage. There we go. Apply the bandage, stop him from bleeding. Get the scrape shot blast going. Is broken. Maintain the offensive. They're undead, yet they're... They resist bleeding because they're skeletons or zombies, but somehow they can still get poisoned. Hey, whatever. This expedition at least promises and, success. like I said earlier, you'll come across heirloom... Ch or you'll come across chests with your family sigil on it, or heirloom chests. For that, I want to use a skeleton key. Ta-da! I get a little bit more than I would have gotten before.
and every so often, your heroes will scout ahead, so I can see there's a trap here. When I approach it, I will see the chances to disarm this trap. If you don't see, it, if there is a trap in the hallway, and you don't see it on the map, you're going to trigger it. You're going to take the negative effects. It's going to suck. Your hero might be able to dodge. Yeah, there's no point in going there. We want the room battle with treasure. But uh, more often than not, your hero is going to take damage and status effect. So we've got a lot of food. Let's heal up. And your hero can get full. Um, so they will not receive any more healing. As or, the light nope, here we go. Purchase, Hunger. Spirits are lifted, and purpose is made clear. The exertions of adventuring have produced nine growing hunger amongst the party. Eat four food, regain 5% health, or eat nothing, take 20% damage, plus stress damage. I'ma eat. Um, num, 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 num. So, we head to our journey's end. So far, everybody's doing pretty good. Our stress levels are decently low. Um, we're going to use up this last torch. And we're going to head in for our final combat with lots of undead. Ooh, and they're surprised. Lucky us. No, no. Plague grenade. Get both of them. A singular strike. Uh, when you crit, you have the chance, or rather, you don't have the chance. When you crit, it doesn't matter, even if it's an AoE skill and you only crit on one, you will get a boost to your stress. You will, you will recover a little bit of stress, a little bit. Like that, see? Sometimes you have the chance of recovering stress with more than one character. Uh, however, when the enemy crits on you, Pretty much your entire party gets stressed out. And uh, as you can imagine, it's not not great. You don't want that very much. Status effects can stack. Great is the weapon that cuts on its own. So I want to stack on that blight so it does more and more damage every turn. Stack on the bleed if they can bleed. Whatever debuffs possible. And there we go. That was a pretty quick and easy. As no, I don't want to leave mount, yet. So too will resistance. Sweet. So now I have the choice. If I if I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty good about this, I can go back and do battle and maybe get some more treasure. But that could be a little bit overconfident, and I could be risking my heroes. So instead, I'm going to just head back to town. Let's see what develops from this. And, as you can see, our heroes are developing traits. Unerring. Ooh, we've got a negative trait. And obsessed with food. So this person's gonna, every time it seems like there is going to be any possible food, they're going to go for it. Some people, um, they have uh, compulsions that they have to do. So, example, uh, some there adventures. There is a great horror beneath the manor. A crawling chaos that must be destroyed. Cthulhu and all manner of Eldritch Horrors. Anyway, as I was saying, the, some people with compulsions, like they'll, anytime they see a stack of books, they have to open it. Anytime they see a pack, they have to, it, it has to be rifled through. Uh, things like that. So, now we've unlocked our tavern. Uh, we're gonna grab some, we're gonna recruit everybody who comes a to town at this sword point. sword arm anchored by holy purpose. A zealous warrior. And if possible, I'm gonna upgrade Fresh the tavern. Kegs, yes. Cards and curtained rooms promise solace to the weary and broken alike. Um, now you should probably actually check the stats of the people that you wanna. Another kleptomaniac that you wanna bring in, as things can go. Um. 
but who has the most stress? You have the most stress. Do you need to pray? No, you don't need to pray. You're just gonna drink, because it's the cheapest. Exactly. You're still alive, and that's all that really matters. Uh, the Abbey also the offers stress have been dusted. The pews set straight. The Abbey calls to the faithful. And what will we do next time? All right, next episode. Well, we've got, it looks like all, okay, so we've got the choice between two short ones and two medium length ones. So let's go with what gives us the most treasure. Grave robber, I don't have a grave robber yet. Racer gives good range skills. Manslayer. Ooh! Vengeful Greaves. We are going. What one do you like? You like being in the middle too? What about you, Dismas? There we go. We're going to go fight some dudes next time. We're going to uh, kick ass, take names, and hopefully not die. So, thank you all for watching Eli vs. Uh, Darkest Dungeon. Uh, I will see you again next time, and we're going to try to not completely kill the party of adventurers. Bye for now.